Hi, thank you for joining me today. My name is Chris Peck, and you are watching the Foreclosure Settlement Program Workshop. I would appreciate you joining me today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through how this program works and what your roles and responsibilities will be as you participate and go through this process. As I said, my name is Chris, and I'm the Program Manager and Administrator of the Foreclosure Settlement Program. After today, you're probably not going to deal with me all that often. The only time that I really get involved in the individual foreclosure cases is if something's going wrong, whether that has to do with the homeowner or the bank or the bank's attorney. Occasionally, I will step in in order to try to resolve an issue. Otherwise, you're going to be assigned to what we call a settlement facilitator. Your settlement facilitator will be your point of contact while you go through the program. They are a licensed attorney, and their job is to help you reach a resolution in your foreclosure case. Your settlement facilitator will conduct your telephonic status conferences, and they'll also conduct your in-person settlement facilitation if necessary. I will go on further in this workshop and explain what exactly those terms mean. So what exactly is settlement facilitation? Settlement facilitation is a way for you to resolve your foreclosure lawsuit without having the judge make a decision in the matter. Your settlement facilitator will help you assess the strengths and weaknesses of your case, and they may also suggest possible solutions that both parties can agree to. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you and your lender to determine whether you settle, and if you do settle, what the terms of that settlement will be. We cannot force you to settle. So what that means is we can't make you sell your home, we can't make you give it back to the bank, and we can't make you enter into an agreement that you don't want to be a part of. So our objectives while we go through the program are going to be the following. We want to work towards a solution that helps both the homeowner and the lender. We want to reduce the amount of unnecessary court filings and hearings. We want to help the homeowner and the lender communicate in a meaningful way. And lastly, we really want to help reduce the confusion that oftentimes accompanies the foreclosure process. So you might be wondering why you're participating in this program. The reason is, is your lender has filed what's called a complaint for foreclosure. This alleges that you are in default on your mortgage payments. You should have been served with a copy of the complaint with what would have been accompanied by a summons. After the complaint is filed with the court, we enter in what's called the order of referral. That's what directs you into the program. While your case is in this program, it's gonna be on what's called a stayed status. So what is a stay? This means that your case will have no forward moving litigation so long as you are actively participating in this program. Now eventually the stay will be lifted. If your case is successful with the program, we will lift the stay so that the parties can file the appropriate paperwork finalizing their agreement. If your case is unsuccessful with the program and does not settle, we will lift the stay so that the plaintiff can move forward with the foreclosure lawsuit. Now, what that means is you will have 30 days to file your answer or responsive pleading with the court. After you've attended today's workshop, I'm gonna certify that you participated and we're gonna schedule your case for what's called the initial telephonic status call. Now, the purpose of that initial telephonic status call is gonna to be to find out where the parties are at in the program, what paperwork has been exchanged, what paperwork is still needed, and what progress has already happened. Now, after the initial status call, we will schedule several follow-up status calls. The purpose of those follow-up status calls will be to make sure that the parties are continuing communication as well as exchanging necessary documents. Now, we will schedule your case for an in-person settlement facilitation if we find that the parties are unable to reach a settlement through the telephonic status calls. The in-person settlement facilitation, as its name suggests, would be here at the courthouse in person with all parties in attendance. Now, while these are quite rare, we will schedule one if we feel like it will help the case settle. So what do you as the homeowner have to do? After you view the workshop today, you're going to fill out the form on the court's website that asks you about your contact information along with some of your case information. In the meantime, the plaintiff or the plaintiff's attorney should have sent you what's called an application for loss mitigation. You'll be able to identify that application because it's going to ask you about your income and your expenses. 
If you have not received that application yet, please contact the bank's attorney and have them send it to you again. Now, once you have the application, please begin filling it out and attach any documents that it requires. You will turn those in to the bank's attorney and you will participate in your status conference. At the status conference, the bank's attorney may let you know that there are missing documents. If there are any missing documents, you are required to provide those and turn them into the bank's attorney as soon as possible. After you submit your application back to the bank's attorney, more than likely there will be missing documents. The bank's attorney is required to let you know what those missing documents are. Once you get them, you'll be required to turn those back into the bank's attorney as soon as possible. You will be asked to participate in what's called loss mitigation. Loss mitigation is a term lenders use to describe programs that reduce its losses. Now, there are two types of loss mitigation, retention and non-retention. Retention means that you will be keeping the property. Non-retention means that you will be giving the property up. We're now gonna talk about retention options. The first retention option is gonna be called reinstatement and payoff. At any point during the foreclosure process, you can reinstate your mortgage, which means bringing it current, or you can pay it off in its entirety. Following that is something that we call a forbearance. A forbearance is a six to 12 month period in which you make little or no payments with the unpaid amount either being added to the back end of the loan and repaid as a balloon payment or spread out over a series of months and repaid through what's called a repayment plan. Next is something that's called a loan modification. A loan modification is the most common type of loss mitigation that we see. A loan modification is a restructuring of your mortgage payments, oftentimes reducing your interest rate, but extending the term of your loan. Now we're gonna talk about non-retention. The first non-retention option is something that's called a short sale. This is when the bank agrees to let you sell your home for less than what you owe. Following that is something that's called a deed in lieu. This is when you transfer the deed of the property back to the bank, but you do not owe a remainder balance. The last option is something that's called a stipulated in rem judgment. This is when you and the lender agree to a judgment in which the bank forecloses on the property, but you do not owe a remainder balance. Now, something that oftentimes or sometimes can accompany a non-retention option is called cash for keys or relocation assistance. This is when the plaintiff agrees to pay you a certain amount of money, but it must ensure that you are out of the property by a certain date, and it also means that you're leaving the property in what's called broom swept condition. Now, cash for keys or relocation assistance is usually only paid out after the defendant or the homeowner has moved out of the property. So how do you go about applying for loss mitigation? Like I said earlier, the bank or the bank's attorney should have sent you what's called the loan modification application. You will need to fill out that application and attach any accompanying documents. Some of those documents could include pay stubs, bank statements, social security award letters if you receive social security, and a profit and loss statement if you own your own business. The other form that you'll need to fill out and sign is something that's called a 4506T. This is a tax form which is you giving authorization for the lender to pull your tax returns. If that does not work, you may be required to provide a physical copy of your tax returns. Last but not least, you'll be required to provide what's called a hardship letter or a hardship affidavit. This is a letter by you explaining why you went into default on your mortgage payments. This could be something as simple as, I lost my job and I was unable to make my payments, or it could be longer depending on your specific circumstance. You'll need to provide this letter signed and dated along with your application for loan modification. So as I mentioned earlier, you may be required to participate in what's called an in-person settlement facilitation. This would be a meeting of you, the homeowner, the plaintiff, the plaintiff's attorney, and the assigned settlement facilitator. At this meeting, we will try to resolve your foreclosure case one last time before we release your case from the program. At this meeting, you can have someone to accompany you. 
whether that's a spouse that's not listed on the loan, an attorney, a housing counselor, or some other family member. Please view this timeline to see how your case will progress while it's in the foreclosure settlement program. You do not have to go through this process alone. You can get help. Please refer to the resource list we've provided for you. If you'd like to hire an attorney but you don't know where to start, you can contact the State Bar of New Mexico Lawyer Referral Program. You can contact the Albuquerque Bar Association. And if you're over the age of 55, you can contact the Lawyer Referral for the Elderly Program. Another resource available to you is something called housing counseling. A housing counselor is someone who's HUD certified to help you fill out your application for loss mitigation. They can help you submit it to the plaintiff or the plaintiff's attorney. They can be on your telephonic status calls as well as at your in-person settlement facilitation. Please refer to the resource list available to you to see what housing counselors are available here in Albuquerque. Throughout this time, please be very careful of foreclosure scams. Please be careful of any person or group pretending to be your mortgage lender or servicer. Please be careful of anyone asking you to sign over your deed for a small payment. Please be careful of anyone applying high pressure tactics. If you're not sure if an offer you've received is legitimate, always double check before you agree to anything. You can check with your housing counselor if you have one. You can check with your attorney if you have one. The other person you can always verify information with is the bank's attorney. Now they won't be able to provide you legal advice, but they can always advise whether an offer you've received is legitimately from their client. Please beware of something called a silent partner. This is a person who says that they're either a real estate agent or they're an attorney and they're willing to help you out, but that you shouldn't tell anyone about them. Please be careful of out-of-state law firms and remember that only a licensed attorney in the state of New Mexico can represent you in a foreclosure action. Last but not least, please be aware of fake modification paperwork. It's paperwork that arrives by mail and looks like a legitimate loan modification application. However, it requires you to send in a fee to begin the review process. No legitimate lender will ever require you to send in a fee to begin evaluating you for loss mitigation. If you feel like you've been scammed or are being scammed, please feel free to report that to the New Mexico Attorney General's Office or to the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Final steps, please make sure that you fill out the informational form on the court website that talks about your case information and contact information. Please make sure you begin filling out your application for loan modification. If you have not received that application, please reach out to the bank's attorney and have them send it to you again. Over the next few days, really think about what you want out of this process. Please make sure that you're ready for your telephonic status call. Make sure that you have all of your appropriate paperwork and please make sure you're in a quiet place to go over your documents. A couple of reminders before we finish today. If you're going to hire a private attorney to represent you, Please make sure that your attorney enters their formal entry of appearance so that the court recognizes them as your counsel of record. If you're already in the middle of loss mitigation, meaning you're, you've already completed your loan modification application, or you're in the middle of a short sale or negotiating a deed in lieu, that's okay. Continue with the process and we will pick up where necessary. Please make sure we have good contact information for you a phone number you can be reached at, a mailing address that you receive mail, even if that's different than the foreclosed property address, and lastly, a good email address. We communicate almost exclusively by email in this program, so it's very important that we have an email address that you can be reached at and one that you check regularly. Please keep in mind that we're a neutral party. We do not represent you, we are not your attorneys, and we cannot provide you with legal advice. If you need legal advice, please make sure that you reach out to an attorney 
outside of this program or seek housing counseling from a certified housing counselor. If you need a language interpreter, please reach out to my office so that we can schedule someone who will interpret every status conference as well as your in-person settlement facilitation. Last but not least, and I can't stress this enough, it's very important that you remain proactive throughout this program. You are the most important person during this process, and you're also the one with the most to lose. Make sure that you're turning in your paperwork in a timely fashion. Please make sure you're answering your phone when we call you. Please make sure that you're answering your emails and providing the documentation required from you. You've been given a unique opportunity to settle your foreclosure case, and I really hope that you take advantage of this program. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate your willingness to participate. And if you have any questions after the workshop, please feel free to review your resource list and reach out to us and we'll do our best to help you along the way. Again, I just wanna say on behalf of the FSP, thank you and we wish you all the best.